Clint Eastwood, he's an American legend, and in the iconic 1960s spaghetti western movies, he wore a custom-made Andy Anderson walk and draw gun rig, and I'm going to show you how I make one. Now before we start, a little bit of history on the walk and draw rig. It was designed in 1960 by Andy Anderson. It was made as a fast draw rig. This was back in the early days of the sport of fast draw. And his design was revolutionary because it utilized a steel lined hip plate. Now what this meant for the wearer was that the holster was held securely in place. It didn't flop around. They didn't need to wear a leg tie and it quickly found favor with all the fans of Fast Draw, as well as many of the big uh, movie and TV stars of the day. Now, Clint's rig was commissioned by CBS. Now, that was the uh, uh, company he was working for when he was uh, making the TV show Rawhide. I've seen a copy of that uh, build sheet, and the request was for a straight draw, rough out rig, two and a half inches wide for a Colt single action with a five and a half inch barrel, 41 inches to the center hole. So that's the known facts about the original rig and I've used screenshots and uh, other information and my judgment to build what I believe is a very accurate replica of that walk and draw rig. So with that all said, I'll show you how I build a pattern. So the first thing I do is fold the pattern paper in half, crease it down there, get a pen, mark a center line, that's a reference point. Now I'm using a blank firing replica that's unloaded to demonstrate this pattern making process. And obviously anybody who's using a real firearm would also make sure it's unloaded and they've got no ammunition near to hand. So with that said, let's continue. Hold it in position and make a mark around the profile. This gives you a basic outline of your firearm. And you can see where you're going to build the pattern from. So there you end up with a, a profile like that. Now this holster, we know the trigger guard is going to sit on, on the bottom piece there, on that shelf. And we know that the top of the chamber is about there. And the top of the holster is just going to come below it. So what I like to do is start about three quarters, maybe seven eighths of an inch from the edge of the uh, outline of the gun and just sketch in my profile. Now I know it's going to end about there, something like that. Then you can come in and you can draw in this profile here nice smooth lines nice and eye pleasing and you can adjust this as you go now this is going to probably be number one of about six or seven drafts maybe as you go along this is just the rough kind of start of the holster so we can determine that the the top edge of the holster needs to be about three inches from the top lip of this part of the holster so we can make a measurement there three inches and if we draw a straight line in there we know that's going to be the top of the belt so we know it's two and a half inches deep so we can make a mark there two and a half inches Bring that down there. So we know the gun belt is going to run along here. And this is going to be the top of the holster. Now we can work out the center of the holsters about there. We're going to make the width of the top of the holster we're going to make that about three and a quarter inches so that's um let's make it like that 
and a quarter. So from here, and we know there's a little, little bit of a, a um, angle on this. So we can draw that in there. And then we can bring that in to there. There, like that. And there we go. Now, that gives us roughly the profile we want. Now, what I can do is cut this out. Now, we can look at that and we can say, does that look about right? Hmm. Possibly, but we may adjust it. So what I'll do now is I shall cut this piece out and then we can work on the back skirt. So we take our utility knife. At this stage, it's just a very rough design. Now, what we can do, fold that over there. Mark it down here. Now that gives us a very rough shape to work with. That'd be better. Let's do it this way. Now, now we know the skirt's going to come down probably like this. Just shy of there this side going like that and so the belt's going to be running here and there's going to be these these tabs these ears that run behind the belt like that So that's going to form the back of the holster. So again, what we can do we just cut So, this is just a basic rough idea of the pattern. So we shall stick that there.
So now you can see the gun fits in there. Like that. Tabs at the back. And eventually you'll refine it till you arrive at a pattern like this. This is a slightly stiffer cardboard and then it can be transferred to a hard thicker cardboard like this. And there's uh, slots in there for the strap that goes around the holster. In my case it's going to be decorative because there's going to be two Chicago screws that locate the pouch to the back skirt. This is the tabs and this is a template for the steel liner that's going to go within the two pieces of leather. So you just work on your pattern. This one took me about seven drafts to, to end up with a working pattern that I was happy with. So take your time, work at it, go away, have a cup of coffee, come back, have a look at it, eyeball it. Your eyes are the best, uh, one of the best tools you have to, to see if everything's working right and you can make your adjustments and eventually you'll you'll end up with a with a nice working pattern that you can uh, use for years to come so now we've got the uh, pattern for the holster it's time to cut some leather so here you can see i've got the patterns laid out on my piece of leather this is going to be the rough outside and this side will go on the inside so I'm just going to make a pencil mark all around here, a light pencil mark, so I can just see to cut this piece out. I'm going to punch the various holes. And that bit is going to be glued to this piece with the metal liner inside. Now you can see the outline of where the metal liner is going to go. This is the uh, over the belt. This is the tabs at the back, or the wings that are going to form the hip plate. And this bit portion is for the cylinder section. So there you can see a nice uh, light pencil mark. Gives me a good guide to cut that piece out. Mark it, mark all, I've marked all the holes and all the slots that need to be punched through. Now if your pattern's got a lot of tight corners in it, what you can do is use a punch to punch out these really tight curves. That saves a lot of hassle trying to cut that with a head knife. So I've punched that one as well. I'll punch that one out and I can cut the, cut the rest with my head knife. Makes it a lot easier. Now when you're cutting your leather, if you cut out of the corner, follow it along nicely. I always like to turn it around, cut away from that curve so you get a nice clean cut. There we go, there's the pattern cut out. I'm going to leave this edge a bit uh, over, oversized for now. But that's basically the pattern for the walk and draw. So this is the back of the outer portion of the holster. This is going to be the template for the steel plate. So th this is going to sit in here like, like that, be glued in. I've got to cut this out of mild steel. I'm going to use a 22 gauge mild steel plate for that. So that's my next job to get that cut out. Then I'm going to prime it and glue it in and I can sandwich the whole thing together and stitch it around. 
So I've used my card template to mark out on the mild steel sheet. This is a 22 gauge 0.7 of a mil thick. It's quite sturdy enough for a holster, but not too thick that you can't form it. So I'm going to cut this out now and it'll be ready for primer and installation within the holster. There we are, there's the template all cut out. I'm gonna uh, finish the edges, sand them down, smooth that out, and uh, that'll be ready for primer. Okay, so it's had a coat of primer, protects it from any uh, rust issues. Now I'm gonna give it a coat of contact adhesive, let that dry, then it'll be ready to glue into the holster. Okay, time to apply the contact cement is a really strong contact cement. It's going to make a nice solid bond. The two pieces will become one with a steel liner sandwiched in between. Making sure I don't glue in the area where the hammer retainer is going to be threaded through. best to mark where you don't want the glue as well as an outline because it just gives you a good visual reference when you're applying the glue. It's quite easy to get carried away and glue everything and then when you come to assemble it you realize you can't get the two pieces apart. So uh, take your time just mark where you want the glue and you'll be all right. Hopefully I haven't done that today and I've got everything cut out properly. Now this side's going to take It's not seen and I think it's a worthwhile upgrade just to make everything nice and secure. Okay now I'm ready to put in the metal liner. Got to be careful to get it positioned correctly the first time. Once this glue sets it's not coming out again. Looking pretty good. Looking good. Excellent day. Okay, so I've got the two pieces ready to bond together. The steel line is in position. You can see that there. Now I've just got to line everything up. Make sure it goes down 
Where I want it. Now, there we go. That's the two pieces firmly bonded together. The next stage is to mark a stitching line about an eighth of an inch in all the way around ending up there and I can trim this do the edge work burnish the edge and start forming the holster So I've stitched all around the edge, including the toe area. So the next thing is to trim this excess off, um, bevel the edge, start the slicking process on the edge, then I can form the main pouch of the holster. Now, always, now I always cut away from the corner just in case the knife should slip and I would damage the project. Obviously you've got to make sure you keep your fingers behind the blade because this knife would whip a finger off in no time at all. There we go, there's the holster is looking a bit more like the pattern I drew out. So next thing, do the edge work. What I'm gonna do on my sanding wheel is just run around these edges, true them up, make it nice and smooth, uniform. Then I shall bevel the edge and start the slicking process. Just going to run around with this edging tool. It's become my favourite edging tool. This is a multi bladed tool from Weaver Leathercraft from uh, Horseshoe Brand Tools. Very nice little tool. Get assortment of blades. Does an excellent job. Now while I'm here, I'm going to put the stitching groove in. Probably come in a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. Get a nice solid 
bite on that leather. that now I shall make a what no what I should do now close up the stitching holes so just apply some water there Just locks the stitching in place, makes it a lot neater, a lot more finished. open up the slot that's going to take the holster loop and this is where the hammer thong will go eventually now what I'm going to do is start slicking the edges of the holster it's always a good idea to do this when the holster is still flat because you can uh, get into all the little curves, tight curves and corners a lot easier when it before you've actually formed it into the uh, final shape. So one, once I've done that I shall apply, apply a coat of um, dark brown edge stain, let that dry out fully overnight. Then it will have a coat of neat's foot oil again to soak in overnight before I stitch, fold the holster, stitch the seam up, put the welt in and um, finally form it up into the finished holster. So what I'm going to do now before I go any further is give it a coat of neats for oil. Now this is so that I can be sure that every part of the holster has had a good coat of oil. Now I've warmed the oil up so it soaks in really nicely couple of light coats at this stage is all that's needed make sure everything's covered and you can see how nice and dark that goes now this oil will soak in and it will lighten up considerably I'm also going to do the rough outside And it always looks very dark when you first put it on. I'm going to leave this overnight, come back in the morning, and this oil would have spread throughout the leather, lightened up quite considerably, almost to the point of going back to the original colour. But I like to make sure I've got a nice coat of oil in there where it needs to be helping to preserve the leather for long time use make sure I've got a, some on the edges And tomorrow I'll be able to form the holster, stitch up the seam, get it in its final shape. 